today. Uh, we're looking at Adagio Bank Rec, and uh, this is an application uh, that arose from the need uh, to be able to keep track of an actual bank balance as opposed to just simply clearing checks. And uh, what we'll be doing with the session today is just talk a little bit about why you might want to have Bank Rec uh, in your Adagio suite if it's something that you're just investigating for the first time. We'll take a look a bit about just how to set up uh, Dodger Bank Rec uh, with the codes and how things integrate. Uh, we'll spend a little bit of time if you also use the Dodger Receivables, uh, specifically version 9, uh, what it takes to set up uh, Receivables 9 so that you can uh, retrieve uh, cash that you enter in Receivables 9 into a Dodger Bank Rec, and we'll show you what that process looks like. We'll spend a little bit of time uh, in the batch entry in Bank Rec, and not only for if you were to enter in the receipts or deposits uh, directly in Bank Rec, um, but also if you were to do payment entry um, or um, the bank, uh, transferring balances between one bank and another. We'll look at the process in Dodge of Bank Rec for very uh, simply being able to transfer um, uh, and say a customer check uh, was uh, a non-sufficient fund and what it takes to reverse that check, uh, restore the invoices, and apply any bank fees or customer charges associated. It's actually quite a simple process uh, that the program does automatically for you, but we'll investigate what that looks like. And finally, we'll look at the bank reconciliation function, uh, not only the uh, way they're doing manually, but also uh, how you would uh, import a uh, reconciliation that you would download from your bank. So that's what we have uh, planned for today. Uh, before we actually start the session itself and talk a little bit about what bank rec is, just be just interested to see uh, from a uh, poll from our audience, uh, just to know who is actually uh, using Adagio bank rec in our audience today. And I'll just uh, wait a moment. And I think that's pretty much everyone, so I'll just close. And uh, coincidentally, it looks like it's a 50-50 split between people who are using and those who are not. So that's great to know. Thank you. That's a very simple poll to start with. So what uh, is Adagio Bank Rec? Why would you uh, want to have this? And what will it give you that other Adagio applications cannot? Bank Rec allows you to see an up-to-date cash balance uh, so you can reconcile uh, your actual bank amount to what's in your GL. Uh, you have the opportunity of seeing uh, what your cash balance is now and what it will be uh, in the future uh, when all of the outstanding uh, AR or AP uh, transactions have been cleared so you can kind of see where your cash is going. Uh, you can also go in the back in the past. So it's a way that you can see where your cash position is on a day-to-day -day basis and be able to um, sync it to your general ledger. Uh, you have the opportunity of bringing in uh, a bank reconciliation electronically and import it in and match it up to any outstanding uh, checks that you've written or received from your customers uh, so that uh, if you're a higher volume site, uh, then having to deal with this and uh, whether checks have cleared your bank, um, whether there's some you know, reversals required or that sort of thing is a lot easier to deal with on a, uh, a large scale basis importing rather than doing it on a one by one. Uh, it, as mentioned earlier, it's a very easy way to uh, generate non-sufficient fund transactions for your customers and if they've ever written you a bad check. And, uh, so there's a way that to uh, step through that process very quickly. Uh, also, if a customer requires a receipt, a uh, printout of uh, a cash payment, uh, Dojo Bank Rec has a form designer, like most uh, many other Dojo programs, that allows you to design uh, a receipt form that you can print, fax, or email uh, to your customers, or re-email or re reprint uh, at a later time uh, if required, including a full history as far as which receipts have been printed and which ones have not been. Some other uh, things to note about Bank Rec, it does integrate uh, directly to Dojo Payables, the Dojo Receivables, the Dojo Ledger. It also can re uh, retrieve uh, payments uh, for payroll, from your payroll, so that uh, you can have all of your uh, applications that uh, touch your uh, bank account be able to have it all collected in one place. Uh, you're able to auto-apply payments to customer invoices, so if you receive a customer check, uh, then all you need to do is put in the amount of the check and click an auto-apply button, and it'll automatically assign the payment amounts uh, to uh, the appropriate transactions, the invoices, or, or credit notes that have been unapplied or unapplied cash, or there's some handling uh, features involved with that. Uh, those sorts of uh, applications have also recently been added to receivables in version 9. 
There's also a future cash flow report that allows you to see uh, what your outstanding 30, 60, 90 will be in the future, and if they're paid on time, uh, where your cash position will be in those uh, aging periods to allow you to see whether you're going in the right direction and uh, if your cash flow is going to be uh, decreasing, uh, then the opportunity of uh, stepping up your collections in AR, so just to give you a hint on whether that sort of uh, step is required. So that's just a very brief introduction as far as some of the things that may be interesting about bank rec in a general sense. Why don't we just get into the program because that's way more interesting. And uh, I'll be demonstrating uh, using the current version of Adagio Bank Rec, uh, version 8.1b, and uh, there's a release date, uh, service pack release date of uh, May 2010. So I'm going to sign into Adagio Bank Rec like you would with any other Adagio program. And I'll sign with today's date, and I'll just be using sample data tweaked a little bit just to make the demonstration uh, go a little bit nicer. So um, what we're going to do, uh, we're not going to worry about showing how to set up bank rec in this case. We do have uh, other webinars that we've held that shows that. And there's also a tech note uh, on our website to show how to do a take on balance. Um, what we're going to do is just to show you the bank codes and some of the integration things that are associated uh, with Adagio Bank Rec. So if I go into the banks, uh, edit menu and banks. I happen to have three different bank codes set up. Um, one is my operating bank, one that has some uh, flow through uh, for credit card payments, and one that's specifically set up for Visa credit cards. So if I just take a look at, say, the last one, it doesn't really matter. Um, there's a number of things to, that you need to uh, look for when uh, maintaining your bank. Uh, the first tab is very straightforward. It contains uh, the information for the address and, and email and stuff, but you can also set whether a bank is active or not. So uh, if you no longer deal with a bank, uh, but you can't delete it yet until uh, such time that uh, all your transactions kind of flow through and have been purged through the history, uh, then you can choose just to simply make the bank inactive so that doesn't show up on, in certain areas. Uh, when you choose to interface it, you can choose if you wish to interface it with either or both of Adagio receivables or Adagio payables. So you certainly can create banks in bank rec uh, that are strictly uh, receivings for your, uh, your customers or s simply payouts uh, for your payables. And typically, uh, cre your credit card handling uh, would be an example of that. Um, and uh, when you choose to integrate Adagio bank rec with other applications, whether it's receivables or payables, uh, what you need to do is you need to create a clearing account um, in your GL. And so that's the reason that is required is that in your payables and your receivables, of course, there are, are uh, control accounts and banks that potentially could write to your GL bank account. And uh, what you need to do in those applications is redirect uh, the uh, postings in AR and AP instead of to the actual bank account in your GL to this uh, new clearing account. And that's just to ensure that when you use Adagio Bank Rec, you're not double posting to the GL. And so uh, the accounting is automatically handled when you use bank rec, such that when you do transactions in AR AP, it writes to the appropriate transactions to the clearing account. And when those transactions are retrieved into bank rec, it uh, reduces and nets the clearing account back to zero and then writes to your actual live GL bank account, which is set up on the series tab. When you're integrated with Adagio Payables, uh, there is a one-to-one -one correspondence between the uh, bank codes that you have set up in Adagio Payables, and there happens to be three here, and uh, the uh, bank rec codes that you have in here. Um, so that's what's required for Adagio Payables when it um, posts uh, and after printing checks and posting there and retrieving the bank rec. That's how bank rec knows which uh, checks go in, into the appropriate banks here. So uh, that. Uh, setting this bank code up is an important step to ensure that the right checks you post in uh, Adagio Payables gets retrieved to the right location in Adagio Bank Rec. Something I would probably recommend to uh, set up if you choose to integrate Adagio Bank Rec with your payables is that um, there are two different choices for updating the check reconciliation in payables because it still needs to be done there because that's where checks reverse and update uh, if you need to reverse a check or to clear a check and have um, just things update in payables that needs to be done. If you set the pending status, uh, then it makes the check reconciliation side in payables a whole lot easier. Uh, when you do a bank reconciliation here, uh, it will automatically send those same changes to payables. And so all you need to do in, in Adagio Payables is just open up the check rec function, hit the post button. Uh, you don't have to do anything else. Uh, the, the statuses have already been sent. And so this just makes the, the process a little more seamless. 
We'll talk a little bit about electronic reconciliation a little bit later in the session, um, but just be aware that on a bank-by-bank -bank basis, you can choose to enable it if you wish. There may be some banks where you don't require this and others that you do, and so you can set this on a bank-by-bank uh, -bank basis. And we'll talk a little bit about more of this uh, later on in the session. On the Series tab, this is a place where you set the GL integration, uh, such as there's particular accounts you need to write to. Um, when you do uh, interest or service charges um, or uh, NSF fees, if the bank charges you a fee um, for when bad transactions go through. Um, it's also a place where you, if you do deposits to the bank, if you want to specify how deposits are handled, uh, not only do you put the bank account number, um, but you can also choose to put in a prefix and choose whether, your, if your deposits are daily, you can use uh, a date, the, today's date, as the, the deposit number. Um, if you don't do deposits daily, then you can choose an incrementing sequence number um, that will update. And so maybe you do them uh, every other day or weekly or however often you do them. This particular bank is set up using the date, um, so that would represent the fact that deposits are done daily to this bank. At the bottom is an inquiry for the opening balance, which is essentially the balance um, when you first created the bank, um, and the, la uh, the last statement to date. So the last time that you did a reconciliation, this is the balance. And so this is a way that you can specify uh, when uh, a reconciliation is done, then uh, you can know what you started with and that's saved on a bank-by-bank -bank basis. And so once a statement is or a bank is reconciled, uh, then from that point going forward, any checks that you uh, choose to uh, write or, or clear, you can see that update um, on the, the, the balance uh, inquiry screen. You should be aware that you can't edit this. Uh, once you have created the bank, these fields, as you see, are blue, which means they're not editable. So uh, setting up the opening balance in the last statement um, is uh, somewhat important to do because you can't change it once you've done. Um, a very easy way uh, of creating a new bank um, and being able to set this information up is just simply using zero as uh, the opening balance and the last statement. And when you do your first reconciliation for this new bank, all you need to do is uh, clear all the checks that are appropriate, and then there will be obviously some difference. And then you post a single entry uh, in GL, or sorry, in Bankrec, um, where you uh, post a, a net payment or a net deposit uh, single entry for that uh, difference. And then the distribution code will be to the GL bank account, so everything nets to zero. And then that will bring the uh, statement amount uh, to uh, sync with your first statement for the new bank. Banks also allow you to keep track of notes like you can do in for customers or items or uh, uh, vendors where you can keep track of notes or conversations in case you have conversations with the bank uh, or any other reason you might want to keep track of notes uh, on a bank-by-bank -bank basis. So the next place I'd like to talk a little bit about um, is the ability of sending cash from AR to Bankrec. And this is something that we introduced uh, when we released the Adagio Receivables upgrade uh, to version 9.0a last year. So it's a relatively new compared to uh, some of the other features and how old Bankrec is. Uh, prior to that release, uh, cash was required to be entered in Bankrec and then retrieved into AR. So if you want to be able to use Adagio Receivables for the cash entry and then retrieve it into Bankrec, first what you have to do is set up Adagio Receivables. So why don't I do that, and I'll just load a Dodge Receivables now. And the very first thing you have to do is to go into the company profile in the integration tab and identify that you want to be able to integrate and send cash to Bankrec. And so this checkbox here indicates that the integration is on, and you every time that you post cash, uh, it will send uh, a batch to Bankrec. If you, uh, uh, by default, uh, if you don't do anything else, uh, it will... Uh, choose to send to a specific bank, um, and you can choose the list of the bank rec banks from this drop-down field here. So without doing anything else, if you only maintain one bank in bank rec, uh, then you would just select it here. If you maintain, maintain multiple banks, there's additional setup, which we'll show you in just a moment. And lastly, uh, if you choose to print receipts uh, by default, um, or you print the majority of your customer cash uh, as a receipt, then you can choose to enable this option so that when the batch is entered into Bankrec, um, the cash payments uh, will be marked to be able to be printed or faxed or emailed. Uh, 
If the majority of your receipts uh, are not to be printed, then you can leave this option off, in which case when uh, transactions are retrieved into bank rec, then this option will be off. Of course, uh, you can always edit uh, the request receipt in the bank it, or once the batch has been retrieved if there are certain ones that you want to print or certain ones you don't want to print. Um, but uh, just be aware that um, to, for the majority of the ones that you print or not print, uh, that's what you would determine whether you have this option enabled in, in the AR company profile. If you maintain multiple banks in bank rec, um, whether it's a payroll bank or whether it's a, a credit card uh, or just your operating account, uh, you may choose to uh, want to have different uh, cash payments that you do in AR go to different banks in bank rec. If you do that, then what you need to do is you need to use the payment methods that's set up in the Dodge receivables in order to differentiate which cash goes to which bank. So if I open up the payment methods, you can have as many or as few as you require. Uh, this particular uh, sample data set happens to have four different methods, uh, three different credit cards and checks. You can create all sorts of different ones if you want to have um, methods for uh, cash, if you receive cash, um, or other certificates or uh, pre-authorized debit or however things are uh, loaded, you can, or electronic funds transfer, you can see that there's a number of different categories you can select. And you can specify your own six character pay code, uh, or up to six characters. And then um, on the interface, uh, once you've integrated with Bankrec, you specify which uh, Bankrec bank you want to send it to. You notice that you don't have to have a one-to-one -one correspondence. Uh, it just depends on uh, which payment methods will be feeding which banks. And so in this particular case, uh, this uh, sample data set is set up so that all your received checks uh, goes to the operating account. Visa has its own bank, and so therefore um, the statements it receives uh, from uh, your visa um, will go to a certain bank. And in this case, your statements uh, for in, in this particular sample data, MasterCard, American Express, happen to be consolidated in one statement. Um, how many uh, bank rec banks uh, you set up for your credit cards just depends on the statement that you receive as far as the processing goes. So if you have one statement that has all of the credit cards associated um, that that you um, receive from your customers all come in from one uh, statement, then you probably would only need one bank rec bank. If each credit card is separately statemented so that you can um, do the syncing appropriately uh, for consolidations and for reconciliations, uh, then you would create a separate bank rec bank for each credit card. It just depends on how, what kind of documentation you receive as far as doing, being able to do the reconciliation. Uh, I chose to do one for a single credit card and one for multiple just so that you can see uh, how it would work uh, when it comes time to posting the, the cash um, batches and being able to retrieve into bank rec. There are a couple of options in addition to just setting the bank rec bank. Uh, if you are doing uh, daily deposits, then you may want to uh, use the option to uh, have a batch by date. And so every time that you post a batch in, in Adagio receivables, uh, it will consolidate all the entries on a on a day by day basis and separate it all out so that uh, when the batch is retrieved into bank rec, it will create separate batches, one for each day, uh, separate deposits. And so that's a way of just keeping things separated uh, if that's the way that uh, you make the, the bank transactions are maintained as far as the deposits go. Another option is if you already have batches sitting in Adagio Bank Rec um, for the same day, you may choose to append to the, an existing batch so that if you create any new cash entries in Adagio receivables uh, that have the same day, instead of creating a new batch, which of course would be a duplicate because they really belong the same day, it, uh, the retrieval process will look to see if that batch um, for that day already exists and if so, uh, it will uh, uh, offer to append it uh, and write the new entries into that exact same batch uh, so that uh, all of those transactions will actually be uh, maintained in the one batch as it should be as opposed to separate it out and you have to deal with it uh, manually. In this example, uh, I'm going to choose not to append uh, because uh, the other batches here do just so we can show them uh, how they're maintained separately. So let's go ahead and post a few cash batches in receivables and just show you what the retrieve process looks like. 
In this example, I happen to have three AR cash batches, one for some Visa payments, one for some MasterCard payments, uh, and uh, a batch involving checks. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to post all three of them together. Uh, certainly you can post them individually uh, as required for auditing, but I'm just going to choose to post all three of them. And the posting journal, of course, will pop up if you set that up. If we go into Dojo Bank Rec, um, I can choose to retrieve them manually um, by ret maintenance, retrieve, and then retrieve from receivables. Uh, or if you want to be able to be warned when you first load into a Dojo Bank Rec if there are some transactions to be retrieved, then on the Options tab, you can choose to say, um, when you first log in, do you want to be warned if there are any batches to be retrieved, or do you want to just simply have the process do it for you? And so uh, you can, instead of guessing when someone posts a batch in AR, uh, you can choose to have BankRack automatically warn that for you, um, or any other batches, whether it's posted in Dodger Payables or Payroll or that sort of thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to turn on the Auto Retrieve Batches function, and I'm just going to reload the Dodger BankRack data. Oops, oh, that's interesting. So, um, so there's a batch that's available to be retrieved from payables. I'll just uh, say close instead of retrieve, just to skip that. And um, here's the retrieve receipts from AR. And so you can see that uh, there's a grid here that shows each of the three uh, bank rec banks that will be written to based on the postings that came from AR. If we take a look at the bottom one, which was the, the, the method CH for checks, you'll see that it was set to create a brand new batch, and it will create a batch based on the day, so you can see the name of the batch that will get created, and you can change that if you want, uh, um, whatever is required. You can see that uh, the deposit ID uh, that comes from the bank description, um, how uh, this particular bank specifies um, signet deposits and, and the date in it, and you can see the deposit date. If you want to change the date for some reason, you certainly could do that if you wish. And uh, over here, you can see that because it will create a new batch, um, it doesn't uh, specify a specific batch number. It will just create a brand new batch when the process is run. For the visa, exactly the same thing. Um, you can see that here's the deposit ID that was specified um, in the visa bank, which is a little bit different. So you can have different deposit IDs for your different banks, even though they happen to be on the same date. You just give them different prefixes. And you'll see that it put the uh, payment method in the description, so you can see um, something special about that. In the case of the Crestar Bank, uh, it was set to append an existing batch. And it happens to be that uh, batch 5 had been retrieved sometime in the past, and that belongs to Bank Crestar. And because the append option was enabled uh, for the payment method, then when you retrieve from AR to this uh, Crestar bank, and it looked and noticed that a, a batch already exists, a uh, receipt batch already exists for um, that, then it will choose to, uh, or, or by default, offer to append to that batch um, because it doesn't use the date um, it, and this particular one uses a sequencing ID. At this point, you can choose if you wish to say, no, I'd, I'd rather uh, do a new batch. You can certainly choose that um, on, the, on the fly here. Uh, you're not stuck with appending an existing batch if you don't want to. So this is just the layout of what will happen. Um, I'm going to go ahead and process, and we'll process uh, all three of them at once. Uh, uh, it's, it's not a selection. Uh, it will uh, process all banks at the same time. And then if we go into the batch entry, we can see that batch 5 has, oops, I can't edit that batch. Um, but uh, it uh, appended uh, batch 5, and then it created a new batch 7 for Visa and a new batch 8 uh, for the checks. And so that's just a general breakdown over how the retrieval process uh, from AR uh, will be able to bring things into bank rec. Uh, it's key that you set up in receivables the payment methods for how you typically will want to deal with the batches coming into bank rec because that will allow the process to flow as smoothly as possible and uh, require as little uh, manual processing as possible. So identifying um, which uh, banks you need to create in bank rec for credit cards, for example, uh, may be um, just some of the steps for setup, and then how you do your deposits for each of your banks, whether it's by day or not, and whether you want to be able to group um, multiple 
batches on multiple days to an existing batch or not, uh, that's completely up to you. And these options are um, inter interdependent, so you don't, if you pick one, you're not stuck with having to pick the other or not. So that's a little bit about the receivables uh, setup. The next thing I like to do is just to show you a little bit of the manual uh, batch entry in Bankrec, and we'll spend a little bit of time on the receipts. Um, when you create a new batch, uh, you can choose a bank, and there's a default bank that you can set the company profile that you would typically create batches for, so instead of always defaulting to the first one on the list alphabetically. If you want it to be a deposit batch, um, so that all of the receipts get lumped together with the same deposit ID, then on this screen here, uh, which is also accessible from the rename button once the batch has been created, you can choose deposit only, in which case it will uh, specify uh, uh, all, of the, all of the receipts that belong in this batch uh, will be lumped together in deposit. The description comes from a default that's set up in the company profile. Of course, you can always overwrite that as required. So when I create the new batch, any receipts that I create um, will automatically get lumped into the deposit ID that you see here. And if I change the date um, here, you'll notice that it doesn't change the bank reference. Uh, this date is specific to the receipt. If I wanted to change the bank reference to a different day, um, then what I would need to do is to rename the batch and change the deposit date here. This is specifically the deposit date, and you can see that that Actually, it doesn't change it on the fly, but it gives me the opportunity to change it here if I needed to. When creating uh, receipts in here, you can choose, if you wish, to select a customer um, that has a balance outstanding, and it will show all the outstanding transactions here, and then you have the opportunity of uh, paying the transactions here if you choose to do the cash entry in bank rec rather than doing it in receivables. Um, also, you may choose to do miscellaneous cash receipts. So if it's a one-time customer that you uh, don't care about uh, saving history for, uh, you probably won't do business with them again, then you also have the opportunity of doing a miscellaneous cash receipt. Uh, the details themselves are distribution codes, just like you would be used to doing uh, in Adagio receivables or Adagio payables, and they can be uh, directly to uh, a specific uh, revenue account um, or an expense account in the case of a payables. Um, and uh, you can also do tax included distributions uh, so that um, if you enter in a certain amount, uh, it will automatically break out the appropriate tax. Uh, if you choose to print a receipt, uh, then a receipt number will be assigned. Uh, in the case of a customer receipt that you print, uh, it will load the, cu the customer's address. And so if we take a look at the, uh, the address, it will be uh, uh, entered in here, and once the receipt is ready to print, and then there's a print receipt button uh, that will print it based on a specification that you define. And, or you could fax, or you can email. In the case of a miscellaneous uh, receipt, of course, it will not have um, anything here, so you'll need to fill in the name and the address uh, as required for miscellaneous cash receipts, including updating the name as well. Adagio Bank Rec supports distribution sets so that if there are particular transactions or, that are grouped, so if you would typically do a set of five different distributions to five different GEO accounts um, and not have to edit them one by one and pick the accounts one by one, you can, uh, like you can in Adagio Receivables or Adagio Payables, lump all those distributions together as a set so that it will cycle you through all of those GEO accounts one by one. All you need to do is to type in the amounts and hit the enter button to go to the next one. So it's just a quick way, if you have a predefined set of distribution sets, and it allow, um, distribution codes or GL accounts, uh, so that it allows you to cycle through them all and to ensure that you don't accidentally miss any. So that's an example of a receipt. Uh, well, why don't we go ahead and do uh, one uh, customer payment just to show what it looks like. So this customer has uh, $140.97 outstanding. I can type in that amount if that's the amount of the check. And I can either click this to apply it, or I can press the space bar to automatically send the applied amount. And you can see if there's anything left to apply, it will show that. Um, if I press the space bar again, I can unselect um, and unapply the cash. Um, there's also an auto pay button here that allows me to uh, select if you have more than one uh, invoice uh, based on a, the due date or the invoice date. And we'll always pay the oldest ones first. 
if I want to go ahead and print the receipt, I'll just show you what it looks like um, with one of the predefined uh, sample forms. So here's an example of what a form might look like uh, as a cash receipt and show a list of invoices and the amount that's paid. And of course, these are customizable so you can make them look exactly the way that you would like. In the case of doing payments, uh, essentially what you can do is um, you can also pay uh, AP vendors, Adagio Payables vendors, if there's any outstanding balances here. Uh, note that the Dojo Bank Rec does not have a print check function. So if you plan on wanting to print checks uh, or do electronic fund transfers, uh, then uh, doing this sort of payment in uh, Bank Rec is not really the appropriate way to do it. It's better to do it in the Dojo Payables and then retrieve it in Bank Rec uh, rather than doing this entry here. Um, but if you are just uh, recording checks that have already been paid uh, or uh, uh, processed, and it's just a matter of just simply recording them, uh, for the reconciliation purposes, then a Dodger Bank Rec would be an appropriate place to do this sort of thing. You can do payments to vendors, um, or you can also do miscellaneous uh, payments. In the case of doing a payment for a vendor on file, let me just see if I can pick one that's got, um, I'll stick this last one here. So you, this one happens to have two different outstanding invoices, and you can pay them uh, with a check number, just like you would. You should be aware that the reference for this will be the check number. Uh, the bank reference just happens to show what the deposit ID is for your reference. And I can go ahead and add one of these if I wanted to create a payment uh, for this um, uh, vendor here. You also can do miscellaneous cash invoices uh, for a one-time vendor. And uh, it uses, uh, you have to put in a cash invoice number. Oops. And uh, I use the, the same distribution codes that you can also access when you do receipts. Um, or you can just do it directly to an, an expense account in, in the GL if you wish. A third type of transaction you can do uh, in batch entry in bank rec is a bank transfer. So if you maintain multiple banks, uh, it's natural and, and typical that you may uh, have a balance and an amount that you want to send from one bank to another. If you're uh, paying a credit card, that you can transfer something from your bank to a credit card balance if you're doing that this way. Um, so uh, in the case of doing a transfer type uh, transaction, uh, you'd give it your own internal bank reference number and uh, the date, of course. Uh, the bank code that's associated with this batch is Signet, and of course you need to associate a different bank. And so are you um, choosing to send the, the cash from or to? And then depending on what you pick, uh, you still obviously have to pick the different bank that you're choosing. So let's say that I want to transfer it to this other credit card bank um, and uh, the amount here and the memo that's required. Uh, they have a very small payroll. I'm not sure I'll spell it right. So then you can uh, specify the transfer here. So there's uh, three different types of transactions that you could potentially create. And uh, so that would be the receipts uh, or deposits, the payments or transfers. One thing I'll also mention is that uh, on any of the transactions, there's a little checkbox here that says post is reconciled. And so essentially that will mean is uh, you know that this will clear the bank. There's no question that um, the transaction that you're entering here could get reversed. Uh, uh, so having this posters reconciled option here essentially uh, will be that once this batch is posted, it will automatically be set to cleared um, in the reconciliation side just to save the process of having to select it at a later time. So I'll just uh, use this particular transaction to set this just so you can see what that does. And when you're happy to go, we'll can post that. I'll go ahead and post that um, batch that we just entered here. And of course, there's a posting journal if you want to be able to keep track of that information. Uh, the next type of transaction uh, that I'd like to show is just how to do reverse a, a non-sufficient funds check from a Dajo bank rec. And it's a fairly straightforward a transaction to do in Adagio Bank Rec uh, because uh, the process is, is defined automatically for you. Um, sometimes 
uh, when you have a reverse check from your customer, of course, what you'll want to have happen is that the uh, information for the invoices that were paid by that check to be restored. Uh, you may want to charge the customer a fee for writing you a bad check. Um, the bank may charge you a fee. So there's a number of different transactions involved. Uh, what's the process for uh, doing one of these NSF checks? Well, first you access the bank balances inquiry. You can choose balances either from the inquiries menu or from the toolbar. And from here, uh, select the bank from which you need to do the NSF reversal uh, where you did the deposit. And uh, you need to view the bank. And then you need to look for the deposit uh, from which, or the receipt from which, uh, you need to do the reversal. Uh, what I'm going to do from here is I'm just going to turn off the view all to remove all of the reconciled transactions and I'll highlight the deposit that happens to have the one that I want to reverse. And so let's say, for example, this one down here at the bottom was the one that uh, you need to reverse. And when you uh, look at a receipt of deposit, there will be an NSF check button over here on the right-hand side. And so what that's saying is that you want to be able to reverse uh, this customer amount. So I just click this button. And it will come up with a screen that will indicate uh, the transaction that it will create with a document number. And of course, you can change that if you require. Um, if you choose to charge the customer a fee, um, it will identify a document number for that, the amount that you set in the company profile, and the uh, GL account that you want to associate this for. And that's also set in the company profile. And uh, if the bank charges you a fee, uh, this will be the uh, document number that will be created. You can, of course, change that if you require. Um, I'll call that bank fee. And uh, the amount that the bank charges you, that was set on the bank. And the GL account that was specified on the bank for uh, what do you want to do. And of course, you can change that as required. So there's three different transactions that will be created. Uh, one for the actual reversal, one if you choose to charge a customer, and one not. You don't have to use any of, uh, of these customer charges or bank charges. If you realize that the, the bank isn't going to charge you, I, I can uh, edit that amount to zero, and therefore that transaction will not get created. Um, but just purpose of the demo, so you can see all the things that happen, I'll leave all these amounts non-zero so you can see what gets generated. When I click OK here, the transaction will not be generated quite yet. Um, you'll get a message saying that the NSF entry will be generated when you actually close the whole function. And that's just so you can do a whole batch all at once instead of one at a time. So instead of having a whole bunch of individual batches with one NSF check in each, um, you can, uh, if you have to uh, generate more than one, you can keep uh, the number of batches to a minimum, in this case, just one. So what you'll see here is in the View Transactions window, you can see there's one NSF pending. So if I need to close this and go to a different cash receipt and do a different NSF check, you can certainly do this and keep on going until such time that you close this window that has the NSF pending in the title bar. When I close this button, you'll see our, this is the process uh, time, at this, uh, the timing, so that when I say yes, do I want to process, then I'll go ahead and do that. If I say no, it will cancel all those changes. So let's go ahead and do yes, and we'll generate that. And what's happened? Well, if I go into the batch entry, you can see that it has generated uh, the reversal, and it will generate also the bank fee uh, for that. Uh, so I would need to go ahead and post that. And uh, then when I go into receivables, You can see here is the um, NSF uh, fee uh, for, the, for the reversing of the payment. So you have to pa post this cash batch. This is the one that we just posted uh, in our other batch just a moment ago. So I'll go ahead and post that. And the posting journal, of course, there. And then in the AR invoice, you'll see that it also generated the $25 customer charge. And so it creates an invoice uh, that you can associate with a customer. Of course, if you, don't, if you choose not to want to post that, uh, you can delete this batch and it won't affect the customer. But we'll go ahead and, and just post it just so you can see it update the customer. And we'll go ahead and view the customer itself, uh, Poobell and Davis. If we take a look at their transactions, we can see that uh, the uh, invoice that was paid by that check has, now has its current amount restored. Uh, back to uh, the original amount. And the cash that uh, was reversed is still there. Um, there's the NSF fee that uh, updates the, your current balance. 
uh, or at least it identified that a uh, we've checked 2175 was NSF and there's the customer fee. So there's the process for updating a customer, uh, restoring the uh, invoices, and finally uh, being able to charge the customer so forth. And all of the transactions for the bank have also been updated as far as the general ledger activity and also for the bank rec. So it's a fairly simple process for generating that. Um, they do have to be one by one basis. There's no uh, import process for importing NSF. Uh, hopefully you don't have so many of them uh, in your company that you uh, require that level of volume control. The last thing I'd like to demonstrate is the bank reconciliation. I would just be curious to know uh, as a poll um, how many of the people in the audience today actually use uh, electronic reconciliation, I guess specifically with their bank rec, um, or perhaps if they uh, use it with a different application too. So I'll just wait until a good percentage of people get a chance to vote. So I think that's almost everyone, so I'll just close. So the people in the audience today, again, it's a fairly 50-50 split. Um, presumably um, many of the people that don't use it yet uh, may be the same people that aren't uh, current bank rec users, which would make sense. So uh, thank you very much for uh, voting for that poll. So um, just to show you a little bit about the bank reconciliation, uh, how you access that is also from the same balances screen. You highlight the bank that you want to do the reconciliation for, and there's a reconcile button over here on the right-hand side. Uh, before I go on from this, uh, just so that you're aware, this is where you can see now what was your bank balance as of a certain day, that if you were to change this, you can see that uh, I had posted a, a transaction uh, today for Bank Crestar, and you can see that the balance uh, changes uh, actually for both of these banks. Um, um, so if you want to see what your bank balance was as of a certain day uh, in the past, or I guess presumably in the future, you could do that as well too. Um, if you have post-dated transactions uh, posted already, then uh, these balances will automatically update based on that day. If you are in the habit of, uh, or if your volume doesn't require an import man, uh, manually um, or electronically, you can do a manual reconciliation. And uh, here's an example uh, of uh, the Crestar Bank, and you can see that uh, this one already has a pending status to, of outstanding to cleared. That was that uh, transfer that we posted just a moment ago where the checkbox was set to automatically reconcile when you post. And so you don't have to worry about determining the status. As soon as I click the post button, uh, it will go ahead and change that. As far as the manual status uh, of reconciling goes, essentially what you'll do is take your paper um, bank statement and enter in the date. Uh, I'll, um, actually, I'll just do 1-2702. Uh, so I'll use the sample data so that the amounts are a little bit older. And uh, I'll enter in the amount of that's at the bottom of the statement. Um, and uh, so let's say that it was uh, $5,000. So you can see that there's an amount of checks that you need to be able to clear. Uh, and when that to clear becomes zero, uh, that's the amount that um, uh, will allow you to post. Uh, as, as long as this to clear amount is a non-zero amount, then this post button will not be available. So when it comes to actually uh, setting a status of, um, amount, you can press the space bar. Um, and uh, so you can just highlight a one by one, or um, if I press the space bar again, that will clear. If you, you want to be able to multi-flex, so I know that it's going to be uh, this, uh, uh, hold down the control key and go click and click and click and click. Uh, you have the opportunity of multi-selecting or uh, holding control left click or shift left click and uh, press the space bar to uh, and select them all. And uh, I'll go ahead and select this one and, oops. So, 513219, is that right? Oops. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to do the amount. So once the amount to their statement date uh, says to clear, you can see that the post button uh, is now available to do the, the clearing. Uh, if you want to reverse a check, 
I can double click and instead of uh, clearing it, you can choose to um, say cleared with error um, or a reversal. Um, of course, a reversal will create geo activity uh, for um, updating uh, your geo bank account and the clearing account, and that will also send a entry uh, in order to be able in AP to be able to actually un uh, post uh, that check and be able to uh, restore your invoices in AP that were paid by that check. And so you can see the status is a little bit different here. So once you're ready to update all this, um, um, then you can do the post button. I should also mention if all you want to do is reverse a check and you, you're not actually doing a bank statement, you can always just simply uh, say uh, whatever checking you want to reverse. This post uh, button will turn into uh, post reversal, and then you can just post those reversals. You don't have to wait until the end of the month when you get your bank statement in order to do the reconciliation. So when I go ahead and post this, uh, it will put, change the reconciliation statuses um, to cleared. And you'll notice that all of the ones that were uh, updated will be uh, changed here. And uh, the new uh, bank statement date and bank statement balance will be defined. And so if I say OK to close the screen and take a look at the bank uh, Crestar and the series tab, we can see that the last statement date and amount has been updated on the bank. So that's a manual way of doing reconciliation, um, you know, an example of uh, for lower volume type sites. Uh, if you're in a higher volume site and you would like to do it uh, electronically, uh, let me describe that process. As we saw a moment ago, uh, earlier in the session, uh, you can choose on a bank to be able to import a reconciliation. And there's many different ways, I suppose, that the bank can send you the information. Um, if they have like a QuickBooks format or some sort of open format, uh, that's uh, something that they send you, uh, then you can choose to uh, set the electronic for, uh, reconciliation using something called OFX, which is basically an open format. And in doing so, it will just say, well, where's the name of the file? And uh, once it's imported, you can get rid of it. And if there are any unmatched debits, uh, such as interest, uh, it will uh, by default associate to that particular GEO account. Um, if there are any unmatched credits, for example, bank fees, you can do that. Once you retrieve the file and create that, you can always override those GEO accounts on the created batch. You're not stuck with these ones, um, but it's just that these, these ones would be sort of more typical default ones just so that it can assign uh, some GEO account to the created batch. Uh, if they send you a CSV file, a comma separated values file, uh, then you need to create a template, template name in order to specify, well, what columns are in this file and so it knows what to do. And so you need to actually create an import template that you would select here. Uh, let me just uh, show you what that might potentially look like. Uh, in order to create that template, you go to File, Import, Bank Statements. And uh, what it would probably have is a layout, um, a number of columns in regards to uh, the bank transactions. And so uh, in this particular simple example, uh, the file that I received from this particular sample bank has five columns, uh, the transaction date, a description, uh, a reference number, uh, and two columns, one if it was a credit or and one if it's a debit. Um, you may receive a bank statement where it's just a single column of numbers, in which case instead of using debit and credit, you would instead use amount. And then in that case, you would need to, uh, the bank uh, statement probably would have some other field to identify whether it's a payment or a, a, a deposit, uh, or whether it's a, uh, a um, trans certain transaction type. So if it just simply has a, you know, uh, what, however it is that differentiates whether it's a payment or a deposit, there'll probably be some other field. And we have a few different choices, whether they use a 1 or a 0 or a D for a debit or a C for credit, or maybe they have a transaction type, which is a uh, DP or CR or however it is that they potentially um, have that defined. So there uh, could be some other way of uh, differentiating payments and deposits. And so you have to customize the template uh, in order to match the file that you're receiving from your bank. Once you've got the template set up, and once you've uh, defined that uh, you have the template selected, then you can go ahead and do the import of the reconciliation. So go to the balances and do a reconcile. And uh, when you want to do an import over here on the right-hand side, down at the bottom, there's an Import Statement button. 
And so it, when you click that button, it will show you the name of the file that uh, you've uh, downloaded from the bank. And just go ahead and do an import. And it will tell you how many records were created. Once a file has been imported, I'll just make that a little bit wider, all of a sudden your reconciliation screen kind of comes into two parts. On the right-hand side is what's in your bank rec data. And over here on the left-hand side is what's been imported. Uh, in the higher volume sites, of course, you'll want to have the program do most of that matching for you, as much as it can do. And so the first stage would be do an auto match. Uh, before I click this, I should also just uh, reference the fact that you can change the sorting of these grids. So if it wanted to make it easier to find transactions, maybe by date, uh, you might want to have them both set up by date so that they're sorted the same way, or maybe by reference, so you have them that way, um, or perhaps by amount if, while you're looking. So um, maybe I'll just do it by a date, just so you can have them sorted uh, by the way that they were posted. When the program, um, if you click the auto match button, what it does is it checks the imported uh, bank reference and date and amount against what you have in bank rec. And if the reference and the date and the amount all match, it will uh, match them together. Um, if uh, there's a slight difference in the, in the in, in case it sees that there's only one amount um, and there's only one amount over here and the check number might be different, a uh, bank rec will match those for you. It'll assume that you maybe mistyped the reference. Um, you can, of course, always unmatch them if you're required to do so. Um, but it, if it only notices that there's uh, the same uh, transaction here and here and there's only one amount, um, for example, let's say that uh, this is uh, the only transaction has a balance of minus 89.33.74 and only has one over here as well too, it will assume that those ones actually should be matched together even if the transaction uh, reference happened to be different for some reason. Um, it will also do some other matchings as well if the dates don't match but the imported date is later than the uh, date that you have referenced in bank rec. Uh, if the imported date is earlier, it will not match because it will assume that's incorrect. So just to show you uh, how matching works, I'll go ahead and click the Auto Match button. And you can see that if a match was made, uh, it will indicate so in this column. And it will indicate here in this column that the outstanding transaction has been matched. And uh, so in these cases, the uh, deposit date and amount have matched, uh, or in the case of the check numbers, uh, the check number and the date and the amount all match together. So um, there are a number of transactions that did match correctly. Uh, there are certainly a number of uh, transactions that we imported that didn't match, and let's investigate why. In order to do so, what we need to do is we'll just hide the pending statuses of all of those checks, and we'll take a look at uh, some of the reasons why they didn't match and how we can go about actually doing those matching together. For this first one, it says there's two deposits. Well, I can see the amount here actually reference the fact that these two deposits got lumped together by mistake, uh, or at least they were entered separately here, but they cleared the bank uh, together. What you can do is you can use the shift select or control click uh, to multi-select information here and drag it and drop it here. And uh, the sum of those two amounts uh, do equal that. So uh, because you manually did it, it will match them together. So let's just click that and reselect it to hide the pending status. Um, let's take a look at the next one. Well, it looks like that there's four receipts here that uh, should have uh, that were entered as a deposit over here, but um, they uh, were cleared the bank as individual receipts over here. So I can multi-flex from this side as well and drop them over here. And because those amounts match this amount, then uh, that will indicate that those cleared the bank. And let's do a refresh. Um, here's an example of a deposit and a deposit. You can see that the, it's a deposit and the amounts are the same, but why didn't it automatically match? Well, it's because the date that was on the imported file is earlier than the date that we entered in bank rec. And uh, it, uh, the auto match process won't automatically match those because uh, how could a transaction clear the bank before you ever entered it? Um, as you're looking at this manually, you might say, oh, yeah, I, I mistyped that date. That really should have been December 27th instead of December 28th. Uh, that, that is, in fact, the correct uh, transaction. Then I can go ahead and do a one-to-one -one drag to match that. Uh, another reason why it might not match is because the amounts don't match, of course. And so if we take a look at this, we can see that the date and the check number are the same, but you can see the amounts are different. 
I mean, this would be an example where perhaps the, the batch entry in Bankrec uh, was mistyped for entry, um, but it cleared the bank as a different amount, for, and uh, so you need to generate the difference. So if I do this drag over, um, it will notice the fact that the amounts are different, and so you can choose to, instead of doing an, uh, a clearing, you can, uh, this will automatically set the, the reconciliation status to cleared with error. And so you can see that the status here now says cleared with error, identified by the E. And so, but it will indicate that it's been matched. And so I can hide that. And what's left? Well, just the interest. And of course, there's no, nothing to match to as far as interest. So what you would instead do is you would send this to a new bank rec uh, batch uh, by using this create batch. And uh, it will use the default G accounts that you set up on the bank in order for the distribution codes. And uh, so it will offer to create a new batch with some debits. And you can choose to post it right away, or you can choose to wait till later. And just to show you what the batch looks like from this creation process, I won't post it now. So I'll just say no. And uh, you can see that now everything has been done. Uh, if I do the high pending statuses, everything has been dealt with. And so uh, from this point here, I can enter in my amount, uh, or my statement date, that uh, 2602 and 335048.78. The zero is to clear, so now I can click the post. And the reconciliation is complete. When I come back to reconcile, we get back to just the one screen here. So that the second side is all completely dealt with. And uh, we have a new uh, bank statement balance. Uh, this will have generated a reconciliation posting journal uh, because we had that $10 of cleared with error. So if we preview this. Any GL activity from based on reversals or cleared with error uh, will be generated on this uh, reconciliation posting journal report. And, and, and they'll also show all the cleared ones as well, too. Uh, but you can see that the GL distribution summary uh, for the one that was um, reversed with error, um, you can see that the $10 in the, uh, on the, for the debit credit and what accounts will be updated. And very lastly, before we close the session for today, I should just point out uh, some of the reports that are available uh, for doing some of these cash reconciliations. Um, uh, if you want to be able to see just the list of transactions that are available, which ones were outstanding, which ones are cleared, um, and so forth, you can choose to select for a date range and for a specific bank, just a list of transactions and um, uh, maybe a summary, and we'll do and calculate it as of a certain date. And so for a particular bank, um, or for all of your banks, you can see uh, the last statement date um, that you have, the outstanding checks, and what your balance will be if all of those checks or deposits clear the bank. Um, so that's just a way of seeing what your future cash flow will look like uh, based on that. Um, it's a way that you can also reconcile. So if you want to see what things were as of the end of last month, then you can choose to do this report. That will show what your uh, balance was uh, based on all the transactions uh, as of that date. There's also uh, a reconciliation report that will do a similar sort of thing where uh, if you're in the midst of about to post a, uh, a statement, it will show you not only your opening balance, as of a certain day, um, but I'll show you any transactions that you set to about ready to clear or to reverse, and then uh, the new statement balance if there are any pending that yet to post, and also the same. So the difference between this report and the other one that we saw is we'll also show any transactions that are uh, have a pending status, so you can see what your balance will be if you are about to post a reconciliation. And the last I'd like to uh, just briefly highlight uh, is one called a cash flow report, which is the indication that if you want to see uh, as of today and outstanding transactions that uh, are due in the next 30, 60, or 90 days, um, you can choose to uh, preview this report so you can see what this cash flow looks like. And so you can see your total receivables and your total payables, and you can see what your balance is going to do in 30 days, in 60 days, or in 90 days. So uh, that's just a, a brief look at Adagio Bank Rec in one hour or less. Um, so that's the end of our planned information.